Hello, and welcome to another session of the EDOX training series. My name is Chris Gruber, and today I'll be showing you RM Server Part 2 Administration, part of our RM University series. In the previous chapter, we installed RM on the server and client and installed the RM Admin Tool. In this chapter, we'll cover how to use the Admin Tool to create a file plan. This tutorial is designed for EDOX administrators and records managers who have already installed both the RM Server Component and the RM Admin Tool, as per our previous video. Let's take a look at what we're going to cover. First, we'll look at what the RM Admin Tool is and get acquainted with its interface, as well as learn about what file plans are and what they do. Next, we'll go over terms, including their creation, modification, and deletion. Then we'll get into files and file parts, including their creation, maintenance, and more details into what role they play in the file plan. And finally, we'll take a look at file series and how they work. In summary, we think it could be of some assistance. An important note before we proceed. Throughout this chapter, we reference various options, settings, and parameters, but we do not cover all of them in depth. You can find more detail on these in the RM Admin Tool Guide in the Open Text Knowledge Center. Ready? Excellent. Let's begin. Let's get familiar with the Admin Tool interface and see what functions we have at our disposal. The major items in the interface are the Menu Bar, the Address Bar, the Tree View, the List View, the Relationships window, and the Find window. In the menu bar, RM functions are divided into the menus just as we would expect. We won't cover all of these in-depth, but we'll be using them throughout this and subsequent videos to accomplish certain tasks. The address bar displays your current position in the file plan hierarchy. The tree view is this large panel on the left, and it displays the entire hierarchy of terms, files, and file parts. These items can be expanded and collapsed. And if you right-click an icon or its name, it will display the RM Admin Tool pop-up menu. The list view shows details for the item you have selected. The information shown in the list view will vary depending on what you have selected in the tree view, just like a regular eDocs extensions results pane. The relationships window is directly under the description window. We only see the find window when we go searching for items in the file plan. Find can search for and find terms, even if those terms don't have files categorized under them. But there is no full text searching, nor saved or narrowed searches. Let's make sure we're familiar with the concept of a file plan. We already know how files and folders work in real life. A piece of paper is placed in a folder, the folder is placed in a hanging folder, the hanging folder is placed in a file cabinet, and so on. Since RM was originally meant to catalog and track physical items, it uses the same terminology based on those real life items. Think of a record as that piece of paper, of a file part as that folder, of a file being that hanging folder, of a term as the drawer of a filing cabinet, of a file plan as the entire filing cabinet. A file plan is just a structured way of organizing files, documents, and records. Files are organized in a structured set of terms and subterms, viewable within term and subterm branches. The file plan can be as many levels deep as you like, but it always ends in a file part. You can assign certain properties to the file plan root or any term within, and properties are inherited by the files below. Changes to these properties can be assigned and modified globally or to specific branches. A term or file inherits settings from the closest term above it. Global settings for these properties are established during file plan creation and can be edited anytime. When viewing a file part's properties, you can see which properties have been inherited and which have been set at the current level. Modify this by choosing the file plan properties. When displayed in a view, the file plan shows items where the user has access. Changes made to these settings apply to all users in all views of the file plan. The admin can also allow users to define their personal display settings, overriding system display settings. Terms are categories assigned to files and documents during profiling, sort of like folder names in Windows. Terms can be primary, which is the first level, and known as keywords, or secondary, the second level and below. To create a term, highlight the parent node of the new term. Select Terms, New Keyword when creating a top-level term, or Terms, New Narrower term when creating sublevels. Next, click the ellipsis to look up a file series. Though we haven't covered file series yet, let's choose Default. Click OK to create the keyword. At this point, pause the video and complete the process as specified by the details on screen. When you finish this, resume the video.
Every term in the file plan has some relationship with other terms. These relationships fall into four types. We'll only cover the two most commonly used, hierarchical and equivalence. In a hierarchical relationship, one term is broader or narrower than the other, like the parent of a child. In an equivalence relationship, the terms are considered identical, but only one of them appears in the file plan. This can be used as a thesaurus function for abbreviations or acronyms, or when renaming a term. Perhaps there's a term called staffing, but many users may refer to it as hiring, even though hiring is not in the file plan. With an equivalence relationship, users searching for hiring are offered staffing as the preferred term. This way, RM ensures users locate the correct term, even if they think of it differently or know it by a different name. To create a relationship, select Policy and Procedures, then select Terms, Relationships, and select Related Term. At this point, pause the video and complete the process as specified by the details on screen. When you finish this, resume the video. RM can be configured to describe different relationships between terms. If you intend to use this, it must be changed before file plan creation. It won't change for existing relationships. Select Terms, Relationship, Terminology. Then click the Relationship type to rename. The titles of Relationship Panes and Relationship Menus in the Admin tool can be configured in the Terminology section of Library Maintenance. You must exit and re-enter to view changes. Terms can be modified, recategorized, or deleted. If you change the name of a term once it has a lower level term or file under it, consider setting up an equivalence relationship between the new and old names, then regenerating profile on all child file parts with the new category hierarchy. We'll go over profile regeneration in a minute or so. Recategorizing a term involves moving it from one location in the file plan to another. To do so, either use the menus or simply drag and drop it to its new location. All lower level terms and files underneath the selected term are also recategorized. If you rename a term, the category information for the profiles for all existing file parts under that term is no longer accurate. As a result, you'll need to regenerate the profiles to see if you can set the record straight. To do so, select Administration, Regenerate Profiles. Then either choose to regenerate the profiles for file parts, boxes, or both. Select New Items Only to restrict regeneration to creating profile table entries for items not already there. Finally, click Regenerate Profiles to begin. When it completes, click Close. Keep in mind that in a library with a large number of file parts and boxes, profile regeneration requires significant time and resources. Locations are the physical places where file parts and boxes are stored. There are three types of locations, active, inactive, and transfer. A transfer location is one controlled by an external organization. Items are initially stored in an active location. When they reach a certain age, they're moved to an inactive location. Ultimately, items are either transferred or destroyed. To create a location, select Files, Locations, then click New. At this point, pause the video and complete the process as specified by the details on screen. When you finish this, resume the video. A section represents a business unit of the organization. By creating sections, you can flag file parts as belonging to a certain part of the organization. Sections are not an inheritable property, and they are applied at the file part level. To create a section, select Files, Sections. Then click New to create a new section. At this point, pause the video and complete the process as specified by the details on screen. When you finish this, resume the video. A file is a logical grouping of file parts, usually representing physical files. A categorized file exists under a term, whereas an uncategorized file doesn't. Categorized files can be created at any level. To create one, highlight Customer Relations under the Corporate Committee's External Term. Next, select Files, New File. Notice the dialog is called File Part Maintenance rather than File Maintenance. This is because you're creating a file and its first file part. 
At this point, pause the video and complete the process as specified by the details on screen. When you finish this, resume the video. The response time when expanding the file plan is increased by large numbers of files or terms on a single level. If you have a significant number of files, try to categorize them under different terms. The number of files under a single term affecting performance varies based on your server hardware and network activity. We recommend having no more than 100 files under a term. A new file part should be created when the current file part is too full to hold any more physical documents or if file parts are time-based. Creating a new file part will create a part for the existing file and, depending upon the configuration, will also close previous file parts and make items within those into records. A file part should remain open as long as you need to add documents to it, unless you want to close the part without creating a new one or you want to close a reopen part. The file part icon in the tree view will change to reflect the closure. If the part was the last part of a file, the file itself will also close. You can also reopen a closed file part. This is necessary if you need to add documents to a closed file part. When you finish adding documents to the part, you should close the file part again as soon as possible. Reopening a part will reopen the file if it is closed. Recategorizing a file involves moving it from one location to another, done the same as recategorizing a term. All file parts of the file are recategorized as well. Don't delete file parts unless you created one accidentally. Otherwise, they should be assigned to an appropriate disposal action so they live out their full life cycle. A part cannot be deleted if it has any contents. Uncategorized files are files that have not been categorized within the file plan. They can be searched from the client and in the admin tool the same as categorized files. Uncategorized files are useful for files that don't fit within any part of the file plan or when importing files from a system that didn't have categorization. To create an uncategorized file, select Files, Uncategorized Files, then click New. Since it's independent of the file plan, an uncategorized file doesn't inherit file series, security, or properties, so all of these must be set during creation. Click Select. At this point, pause the video and complete the process as specified by the details on screen. When you finish this, resume the video. A file series controls how file and part numbers are generated and how they are formatted. It can be assigned to the entire file plan or any terms within the file plan. A term without an assigned file series inherits the file series from the closest term above it. If no terms above it have one, it inherits the file series assigned to the file plan. To create a file series, select Files, File Series. Then click New. Enter a name, then define the numbering format. There are three options there. All parts number is files, where a new part is assigned a new file number. First part numbers is file, the rest is parts, where the first part in the file won't have a number, but subsequent parts will. And all parts have file and part numbers, where every part in the file will also have a number. Next, define how a number is assigned. In both sections, there are identical options. Manual entry, where a number is manually assigned. Auto generate, where the number is generated automatically and auto-generate with manual override, where the number is generated automatically but can be overridden. At this point, pause the video and complete the process as specified by the details on screen. When you finish this, resume the video. There are several options for formatting the file and part numbers, all of which are outlined in the documentation. But let's take a second to look at the formatting we used in the file series example we've just created. We specify percent %y, y, y, y for the file number format and percent %space, percent %rn, open parentheses, for, close parentheses, for the part number format. Percent %y, y, y, y means the four-digit number of the file's creation. In this case, if you've created a file in 2017 using this file series, you will see 2017. The part number format is a little more complicated because it uses two formatting variables. The percent %space indicates a space character. 
The percent %rn indicates the running number, which means which part in the file it is. If this was the fifth part created in this file, we'd get the number 5. The 4 in parentheses indicates the number of digits in the running number. If it's the fifth part, for example, it'll display 0005. To see the output for a file series, first assign it to a level. Click the ellipsis for the file series field, choose your new file series, corporate, and click select. Next, click OK, then close. Create a new file below a term where your file series is assigned. This has been RM Server Part 2, Administration. For more information on this topic, please refer to the RM Administration documentation. We continue this series in our next chapter, RM Server Part 3, Operations, where we'll go into what we do with an active file plan on a regular basis. Visit our YouTube channel to keep up with all the videos in the eDocs training series. Did you like this video? Do you want to see more like it? Do you have ideas for other videos? Join the discussion on the eDocs DM forum in the Open Text Knowledge Center. Feel free to contact support if you need any further assistance. We'd be happy to help. And thank you for taking time to watch this video. We hope you found it useful and that you'll be back for more in the eDocs training series.